Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for a discussion on how employers can better support caregivers and even use it as a competitive advantage in today's market. I'm Amanda Dyer, the co-director and producer of the documentary film Unseen, How We're Failing Parent Caregivers and Why It Matters. The film explores the challenges faced by many parents who are caring for children with disabilities or complex medical needs, which is estimated to be 6.8 million people in the United States. Um, we're also joined by Tom Dyer, the director and cinematographer of the film. You'll see him pop up here in just a minute. Um, and you can learn more about the film at caregiverdoc.com. So we're excited to be having discussions like this one today to explore practical solutions to some of the challenges that are explored in the film. Um, and we're especially excited today to have Melinda Stroda with us today. Melinda is a care coach with CareLoop, a company that works with employers to to take time-consuming research and care coordination off employee caregivers' plates so they can stress less and be more productive at work. Um, and while we're chatting, if you have a question or comment, um, feel free to put that in the chat and we will try to get to it there as well. So Melinda, thank you for being here. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your role at CareLoop? Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. So I'm Melinda Stroda. And like you said, I'm a care coach at Care Loop. I'm also a licensed clinical social, social worker. My background is in mental health. And I've worked alongside of many, many families like we were talking about who have had, you know, children with special needs or disabilities. So I've really been able to see firsthand the extreme emotional toll that takes on families, not only emotional, there's a physical toll, there's a financial toll, and it's just not only on those caregivers, but it really can affect the whole family system that's involved. Um, I'll tell you guys a little bit about CareLoop for those of you who don't know. So here at CareLoop, we're a human-powered caregiver support benefit. Um, we're an organ the organization offers this to help their employees better balance their work through providing care to their loved ones. So through this service, we pair our employees. Um, through this service, um, employees are paired with family members or loved ones through a human care coach to help guide and empower them through any caregiving challenge they might face. So when an employee um, is offered our service, it's a free benefit that um, employers offer their employees. And then they are able to open a case and they're connected with a care coach who you know, walks alongside that caregiver on their caregiving journey, whatever that might be. It can be prenatally, anyone who's expecting you know, to bring a child into their life to end of life. So we're really with them through that whole journey. And we wanna be able to support them through any challenge they might face. We wanna be able to empower them and walk alongside them. Um, we do anything from looking into daycares, you know, finding in-network medical providers, um, mental health resources, walking alongside people navigating disabilities and special needs services, resources. Um, we look into assisted living facilities and we even help um, families understand Medicaid and Medicare and what that application process looks like for them. So for any situation that might cause stress or anxiety, for caregivers were there to walk alongside them in that journey and try to take some of that burden off of their shoulders. Yeah, that sounds like a, a dream come true for, you know, if you've tried to navigate the healthcare system at all on any level, you know, it's not, it's not easy and can be really overwhelming really quickly. So having like a, a guide or someone to, to just walk beside you through that process would, would be amazing. Yeah. And, and that's it, something. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just say that's something we heard from the parents in the film over and over and over. Was just the the mental strain of trying to manage all the, the elements that go into care, especially when it's a higher level of of care that they're they're trying to yes wrangle for their loved ones. And all the you know the resources there are some out there, but they're not always connected, and they are not easy to navigate. And having someone that can take that off their plate and say, I've got this, I got you, you know, I'm going to make these phone calls for you. I'm going to navigate this journey for you. I'm going to take this off of your plate so you can really focus on your caregiving um, journey with, be with your loved one, be more present with them and not only at home, but at work too, because so often, you know, as we'll kind of talk about here going forward, those phone calls are having to be made during the workday hours, you know, that research is having to be done, you know, maybe jumping in on lunch or break. And it's really hard for employees to be present as caregivers when they have so much on their plate. So it's really our goal to be able to take anything off their plate 
no matter how small or large, we want to be able to help walk alongside them through that process and take it for them. Mm -hmm. I uh, definitely heard Melinda, more than one time. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like it sounds like you all dive like really deep with with people that you work with. Like it sounds like like more than I think when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, this is cool. This is like a specific telemedicine like consultant that people can um, call or connect with and ask questions with. But it sounds like you all uh, go a lot deeper than that with with a lot of the service that you provide. Right. We truly do. We're kind of more of a concierge type service. So yeah, whatever type of need a caregiver comes to us with, you know, we're there to make those phone calls. Not only are we making the phone calls, you know, for calling doctor's offices, if we're calling daycare facilities, assisted living facilities, you know, we're looking in reviews, we're vetting all those um, licensures, we're seeing if there's any citations involved. So we try to provide them with the best options. We don't say this is the one facility for you. We like to give them a few different options. So they're empowered to make that choice for themselves about what's the best fit for their family. And I think families really appreciate that instead of saying, you know, this is the one option you have, or we recommend this. We're saying here's a few different options that might fit your family. And these, if these aren't good options, we're always, always happy to look into other options, explore other things for you. That's great. And we heard over and over parents say that uh, navigating care is a full-time job in itself. And so that creates that conflict that tension of needing to you know and wanting to have your career but then having to choose between how do, how do I do both of these things and then often having to make hard decisions that create other issues of you know income and finding or or finding caregiver like it's, it's a it's a very interconnected complicated issue um so while we hear from caregivers dealing with employment issues we're also hearing companies saying we're struggling to find and keep workers this is a timely discussion yes for sure and and oftentimes you you know when you're trying to juggle those things it's you know it, it, I talked you know I saw it in the film too how that people would say we just couldn't juggle it we had to make the choice to stay home like that was our only option to care mm -hmm. for our child so being able to be there for them and help them through that so they don't you know if that that doesn't have to be their only option there can be other options for them mm -hmm. yeah so what are those common pain points that you run into, um, you and other care coaches at Care Loop? Like what pain points that you're encountering? From so like some of the main um, pain points we see is currently there's a huge kind of, especially after the pand pandemic, it made it so apparent how big mental health is a need for so many. And there are not enough therapists available, you know, for um, people to be seen, especially for um, kids and teenagers, it's really hard. You know, sometimes there's that six month waiting list, just depending on the service you're looking for. So that has been a pain point for families. You know, they see their child struggling with depression. They see them struggling with anxiety and being able to connect them to those services is hard. There's a lot of tele, you know, help options out there, which works well for some people, but some people really want that in-person human connection. So that's been a struggle. Definitely, definitely child care has been a struggle trying to find child care providers. Um, the other day, I think I made a call to maybe at least 20 places in a very small area that, you know, just they're full, they're full, they're full, wait lists a year out. And this was a family I'd helped recently in May and we'd found a place and then the, the child care center was closing. So they were kind of in a struggle to quickly find something else. Thankfully, we were able to finally find one, but we're, make, we're on the phone making those calls for them, seeing if they have availability, seeing what the costs are, seeing you know if they're open the hours that the families are looking for. Um, there's also just been a huge um, need for just um, any type of services in general. There's really a lack of kind of direct care um, professionals right now due to, due to staffing shortages. So that's, you know, assisted living facilities, home care providers, respite care, um, sitters, things like that. Those have been some of the major pain points. And then, yeah, also, that's a large respite. you know, the cost of services has been another pain point as well. Mm -hmm. So do you find that most employers even think about caregivers as a distinct population of their employees? I've heard from many families that they hesitate to even 
make their coworkers or managers aware of their caregiving responsibilities just because they feel like either they might get judgment or they just don't want to bring that in, you know, into their work world. So do employers even realize how many caregivers there are? I think that some do. I think that there's um, really kind of just a learning curve because, you know, employees before haven't wanted to say I'm a caregiver because then there, you know, might be a chance at not being promoted or termination, things like that. You know, there's not really a law right now that really will help protect caregivers um, fam with fa family caregiving responsibilities. Um, there's been kind of a change recently within like the last, like, hmm, almost two weeks now, there's been um, a Senator reintroduced the Protecting Families Caregiver Act um, legislation that would help it, you know, expand protections for family of caregivers, which would help eliminate discrimination for employers. So we think that, you know, that's something to be on the lookout for that then I think more employees would feel more comfortable coming forward and saying, these are my caregiving duties. This is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm going through without fear of retaliation, without fear of termination, without fear of being demoted or things like that. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're on this call right now, I'm imagining that you know you have some an employer would have some interest in supporting caregivers just because they want to and see the see the business case, not just because the law makes them do it. Yes, so what would sure. so so <laughs> even short short of that, um, how would you do? You have any advice for those companies who might be thinking like we don't we don't want our employees to feel like they can't be their full selves or make us aware of these challenges? What, what Do you have any advice for them? Yeah, I think just having conversations initially starting about, you know, even learning who caregivers are, what a caregiver is. I think oftentimes we, when we hear the term caregiver, we think of adult children taking care of their aging parents or caregivers taking care of children with special needs or disabilities. But there's so many, caregivers is such a broad term. There's so many different types of caregivers out there, you know, caring for a sibling, caring for your partner, just being able to learn um, about who a caregiver is and then really being kind of more concerned about what's going on in their personal lives, getting to know them and, you know, knowing that, caregiving is a huge issue so and a huge concern and if you haven't been a caregiver yet there's a very good chance that you're going to be a caregiver sometime in your life because you know we kind of come into life needing care and oftentimes we leave life needing care and sometimes we need care throughout our whole journey of life so if you haven't been a caregiver yet there's a high high chance that anyone here on the call or any employer might become a caregiver themselves mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a good reminder of why you need to care about care, even if it's not care. your personal story yet. Yeah. Yes. Um, what about, do you see many organizations, I've heard from a few that have started um, like employee resource groups yes. for caregivers? Is yes. Is that something you all work with? Yes. So we, we do actually support quite a few employee resource groups. Um, there are a few that, you know, for the, some of the companies we work the, with, they have their employee resource groups, and then we work with them to, you know, talk about different topics that they want to talk about, whether it's self-care, whether it's how to take care of teenagers. Um, we've had a few about special needs, and we're able to kind of provide a webinar for employee resource groups and support them um, through that process, just getting to learn and know about them, know kind of what their pain points are. Everyone has different things that they're going through, different stressors, but being able to support them and listen to them and kind of help build those um, groups by offering those special webinars and things like that. We've seen some great outcomes from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems like a, a really tangible way to take that first step of supporting caregivers is to establish a group where you can even identify who they are, they can help support each other, and then also be able to talk to management about what is it that would what do, you, what do you need? What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? But having that group you can even consult with on what steps to take, I think is, yes. is the first. A, I think, a I think that's step. A, a, a really a great starting point to say, you know, we have this group, we acknowledge you're here, you know, come to this group, let's all meet together. Let's 
we're probably all experiencing at one point or another the same things or similar things where we can support each other through those and kind of help build momentum in, in a safe place where caregivers can go and feel like they can really express what's going on, what they're experiencing, I think is huge. It really um, creates a, a level of safety and trust within an organization when you have people that you can talk to in a positive manner. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm not being supported and things can start to get, you know, spiraling to be pretty negative, but here we have this group and we can all talk together and work together and it's okay to say we're having a hard time and mm -hmm. it's okay to say you know I struggle with this and I struggle with that yeah send that signal that that's how you can send a signal that it is okay to acknowledge you know not feel the need to hide that side of your life because you wouldn't get a promotion or you wouldn't you know might get terminated or something like that yeah really being able to build, build that culture with your in your organization is huge because so many of us are caregivers or we will be at some point in life and you know struggling to manage all those things with when you don't feel like you can be open and transparent about it makes it even more difficult because you can really start to feel isolated mm -hmm. yeah what's uh when you all start working with a like a new company for the first time what's some of the feedback uh you know you, you talked about that company culture right like what's some of the feedback that you all get when you um when you partner with an organization we get a lot of you know as a care coach you know just even talking to employees on the phone talking to caregivers you can just feel this huge sense of relief and just like I feel heard, I feel seen, I feel like you guys understand what I'm going through. I feel like my employer understands that this is such a need that they brought this to our company that, mm -hmm. you know, they feel so grateful for it. They feel like they're, they're not alone anymore. And, and you can just hear a sigh or sense of relief that we hear from them. And so oftentimes then, you know, we have other employees that will refer other employees to back to our benefit saying, Hey, did you know we have this benefit and they can help you with all these things, not just a few different things. And you can really get momentum going that way too. That's great. So what about the, the flip side? Like what do you see happening if caregivers don't have support from their employer in so terms I, of what, how does that affect the employee and the business? Yeah. So I would say, you know, for the employer, if they don't have support, you're going to see a lot of um, people who aren't able to make it to work due to appointments. You're going to see people who are working, but the productivity level might not be what it is because their mind is somewhere else. They have so many things on their mind. They can't be productive at work because their mind's trying to figure out all the different things going on and all the things they need to do making appointments, you know, researching various resources, making phone calls. So it's really hard to be there and be fully present at work. Um, if if employee, employees continue to not be supported, we see, you know, kind of with the great resignation, you see people that leave companies for other um, employers with greater benefits to offer a greater work-life balance, or also just who have to leave the workplace altogether due to their caregiving um, duties. Um, for employers, you see, you know, the, the people leaving the workforce, you see a lot of maybe not being as productive as they could be. And there gets to be a lot of tension, I think, when they don't understand, you know, truly what's going on what, within the process. Um, I think leaving, is probably one of the biggest things. So being able to retain employees by helping them feel supported is really important. What is what is the term? Is it um, presenteeism? Present, yes, presenteeism, yes. Can you explain that idea? Yes, so presenteeism is, is as we think of as absenteeism as you're not, you know, you're not there, you're not at work, but presenteeism is you're, you're there, you're present, but you're not fully present because you're, mind is so many other places you're not able to be 100% productive at work or even maybe 50% productive because you have so many other tasks that you need to do so many other responsibilities that you're trying to attend to and some and then maybe just feeling stressed like I need to make these phone calls I need to you know research research these resources but not even thinking you know like I can't make those phone calls during the day because there's so many and it's going to take a long time and I'm not sure when they're going to call me back and then you're thinking those things, but you're just still not able to do your job because those things are on your mind. So I think that's one of the biggest things that caregivers say to us is 
wait, you can make these phone calls for me. You can you know, research these resources for me when they're able to just kind of hand it off to the care coach. Then it's like, now I'm here. I can, somebody else is taking care of this for me. And we were able to build this trust and rapport with the caregivers we work with. So they know that we are going to do a, a phenomenal job to get them the resources they need. We're going to, there's going to be no stone left unturned that we're going to try to, you know, explore everything, even out of the box opportunities for those caregivers. And how did the, pandemic changed this conversation like I know it's care has come up more in the past couple of years than probably in any other time in recent history um, where we all kind of realized you know when the kids are home and all services are closed that things can get a lot more complicated really fast um, and then we realized that caregivers have been dealing with that for a lot longer than just you know Correct. since 2020 um, yes. so that I think that was helpful in the sense that it opened people's eyes to what that means. Um, but what do you, do you feel, what are employers still missing mm -hmm. around that conversation? I think the pandemic, you know, it did magnify, like you said, caregiving and all the needs, but a lot of the resources initially went from employers, went into supporting working parents. So looking into backup care benefits, looking into child care benefits, and a lot of their resources were poured into those type of benefits. And so it kind of left out those caregivers who have long-term responsibilities, those responsibilities that don't end, such as caring for children with special needs. And I think it's important to have, you know, employers kind of, now that there's not so many backup care options that are needed, that cares aren't closing every other day based on COVID and things like that, that child care is a little more consistent. Um, finding um, resources for, all em employees, you know, that can be helpful. So I think take, taking a more comprehensive view of what care, being a caregiver is. Being a not, caregiver not is, just, yes, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think so many employers, they want to help and, you know, but they're just not sure where to help or, or what that actually looks like and what's out there and available. Mm -hmm. So what is really the, um, I think, you know, in the title of this session, we talked about what's the, what's the competitive advantage? Like, um, you know, you mentioned some of the some of those factors a little bit, but really what's the business case? I mean, I, I hope there's a humanity case of why we should, you know, support each other, but what's the business case of why employers should support caregivers? Support caregivers, yes. I think um, the employers we um, partner with, we see that there's a huge impact on their productivity. Um, the, the duration of their leave of absences is um, not as long typically sometimes. Um, we even you know, cut down on claims costs and we're able to measure this impactivity you know, by the productivity and savings. So by the, you know, we're able to take all these things off their plates and the things that they'd be doing during the workday, the needs and things like that, we're able to save them hours, their employee hours of having to do that during their work time or having to leave work to take care of these things. And really having an experienced care coach that knows what they're doing and navigating that, you know, just is able to allow the employee to be there, to be at the workforce, um, be present without having to worry about all the other things that they have going on. Yeah, yeah I, would, really I would imagine the the like stress relief of like knowing that someone is in your corner taking care of that would just be such a um, you know, weight off the shoulders and, and um, make someone be able to focus at their job so much easier than, yes. than without it really that. Allows, sure. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. It, it really allows employees to feel valued by their employer, which in turn, you know, then if you feel valued and you feel cared for and you feel seen and you feel heard, you're going to stay within a company that you feel yeah. like you're part of and you feel like has a great culture and, you know, that you, they truly do care about you and your needs and what you're going through. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the reten increases retention, which, you know, I think any business knows the cost of turnover and the higher your turnover rates the more expenses you have for hiring training recruit all the all those pieces so um it's i think it's often overlooked because it's more of a 
soft cost of things, but, and then, you know, the stress that causes to their teammates when people are coming and going and you, you know, you don't know what, who's going to be there. Um, so it's, it's not always like a, something easy to quantify, but we all know that turnover and absenteeism and presenteeism, all these things have costs associated with them. It's just sometimes hard to kind of pin down exactly what those are. Yes. And, and, you know, we have some statistics that are able to show like this caregiver, this care coach supported this caregiver with so many needs, which equivalent is the equivalent of so many hours, like what that would save them within the workplace. So, you know, if they might start with one need, but then you realize they probably have multiple, multiple needs that we're able to really help and take off their plates and then can really save them hours within their workday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this question is similar in, in the chat here. Um, they said, is there a correlation between companies that offer benefits and care loop more progressive and full benefits, for example? Um, Alma, if you want to clarify that at all, feel free to. Are you, are you asking like, um, do you I see think- that the more benefits you have, oh, sorry, did you want to go? You can ask the question. Oh, I was just going to say, if there are more, if you're finding that care loop, um, is in companies that are already very progressive with their and very and have uh, have more benefits more better health benefit packages than other companies is there any kind of a correlation there we have a we're really in a wide range of companies and Mm -hmm. so it just kind of depends on you know where companies find a need what's important to that company um some of those that have greater benefits, we're able to partner with those benefits. We're able to refer them back to their APs. We're able to look through their health insurance and find them in network you know, providers and the next appointment available for them. Um, we really try to, no matter the, what benefits companies have, we really try to um, look as a care coach, look at the benefits that are already in place. And you know, if they already have that benefit in place, be able to refer back to that benefit for the employed or educate them about the benefit and help them learn that, you know, that resource is out there too. But um, I would just say kind of, it it really depends. We are in companies of all different sizes with all different benefit packages. And do you ever work with HR to get more benefits if you're seeing kind of a, a theme that, or different employees seem to have a need for something that's not being provided in the benefit package. Do you do that kind of work as well? So if if we are, you know, like working within a company, we're able to, you know, talk about different needs that come up. We're able to say, you know, these are the needs based on what your caregivers are experiencing. We're able to see the kind of the analytics around that. And, and we do talk to HR um, partners usually about once a month or so to let them know kind of where they're at, what utilization looks like, what the needs are. And from those needs, you're often able to see where caregivers are struggling, you know, what other pain points they might be having and, you know, explore other options that might be a good benefit for them as well to help support them further with those things. Thank you. You also asked Alma um, about a list of companies that use your services. Is that something you publish or I'm not, I believe we have a list somewhere. I'm just not, not sure. Where it's I think, I think you can probably get on our webpage. I'll have to look just a minute. And I want my husband's company to get on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically what I'm asking. Well, I, we would love that. <laughs> do you find that, do you, um, is that how you start at companies off is um you know a caregiver requesting like is it caregiver driven employee driven or is it more top down that you see that you see companies start to be more supportive of caregivers okay, sorry could you repeat that i just <laughs> yeah, yeah um i was just curious if in in your experience you see that the support for caregivers is more top down driven like the like executive management level realizes hey this is something we want to do Or do you see that it's more bottom up where employees and caregivers are saying, hey, we're look, we need need this. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it's kind of um, a mix of both. Um, We work with a lot of HR partners, you know, to help them learn about our benefit. So just to 
for more than, than just our benefit, but the huge need that caregivers are facing. There are some caregivers who will actually sit, go to their employer and say, you know, I've heard about this benefit, either my friend's company has it or whatever, and they will go and say it like, this is a benefit that we really need. And then we've had people reach out to us that way too. Mm -hmm. What about, do you see an opportunity for uh, companies to advertise this as a benefit for recruiting? Yes, not just not just care loop, but support for caregivers in general. Thanks, JP. JP's jumping in the chat. <laughs> okay. Um, as a been like a recruitment tool, I think. Yeah, like do 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 you think just broadly speaking that companies should more if they do have support, whether that's having a resource group or having a comprehensive health plan or having a service like care loop, do you think there's an opportunity? Is that something they should be advertising on the front end? Like if you're coming to work, you know, you're evaluating your job offers, this is a yes, benefit? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And I, I know that we have, you know, like talk with HR who will talk with the recruiters about our benefit, and to, you know, to fully help them understand our benefit and what all it entails. So they're able to say, you know, we have this health package, we have this dental package, whatever the, you know, life insurance, and then we have this caregiving package and what that entails. And it really can, you know, as people are exploring their benefits and different offers that they have, a lot of people are looking for caregiving benefits. They know how important they are. They know what a need it is for them to have that additional support. And they've always needed that support, but, you know, the pandemic really ma magnified that and allowed them to be able to say, this is a need. This is something that, you know, I'm not the only one struggling with this. Yeah, and I think a lot of times with, if you're looking at, um, you know, starting it with a company, or it's just kind of a black box of what you're going to get, you know, like here's our insurance package and you just have really no idea what that includes um, or if it's going to suit your needs and, you know, you, you just kind of, you get what you get. Um, so I, I can definitely see a case for being more upfront that if a company is offering these things, whether it's through a formal program or um, even other benefits like offering work from home or flexible scheduling or um, you know not penalizing for having to take unplanned time off things like that that are caregiver friendly like leading with that when you're even marketing your open positions um, to your employee or making sure that your employees know that those things are available um, even if they've been with the company for a long time yes for sure you know you know for bringing in new hires, but then educating, you know, current employees about the benefits and what we have. And at Care Loop, we'll get, we do webinars, you know, not always every month, but we try to do one, you know, every month or two, you know, for employers um, just to help them learn about our benefit, um, help their employees ask questions, understand, you know, what we can help them with. And we really like to be able to help them learn about this benefit because we feel it is such a needed benefit that you kind of hear the term caregiving benefits and you know it is a very new term that not many people understand and they're like I don't even know quite what that is or what that means so being able to educate people and sometimes it takes them hearing it a few times or mm -hmm. you know until they really understand and then on top of that they're like wait you can do all these things and you can take all these things off of my plate you know this just doesn't even seem real and mm -hmm. to be able to just hear that sense of relief from them is huge yeah. So what's at risk if employers don't step up to make caregiving more possible for their employees? Yeah, like, you know, like I think like we talked about retention, you know, just losing employees to other organizations with better benefits. So if you're not able to support caregivers, it's people will leave. And if, if they're feeling so overwhelmed, if they're feeling like they can't um, juggle both things at once, um, if they have the flexibility to, you know, go to doctor's appointments or make phone calls, you know, that that's a huge help for a lot of people. Sometimes it's not enough. And having this type of benefit is huge because you're not having to make those phone calls. Of course, maybe you'll have to go to the appointments. We're not, we're not able, unfortunately, to take any <laughs> appointments as much as I'm sure we care so much and we'd love to, but, you know, empowering parents to be prepared to go to appointments and things like that too. The other side that I can imagine is not just losing employees 
in general, but specifically your female employees. Yes, for um, sure. As we definitely hear that. Um, and I mean, we all, I've, we looked at the data with some of our other partners, but I mean, we all kind of know intuitively that it's usually the mom that in, or in most cases, it's the mom that ends up the one who has, if, if it comes down to one of us, if you're, you know, a um, married couple or, or dual parent household, that it's going to be the mom that decides I, I, someone has to manage the full-time care. Um, so I think, you know, we've long talked about the value of having diverse workplaces and not supporting caregivers is really going to be more of a detriment to retaining female employees, I think. Not going to help them. You know, you know d and I goals are so huge for so many people and they're really wanting to strive towards reaching those. And as if you see female caregivers having to leave the workplace, you know, then it's not, you're not really going to have that ability to reach those goals that you're trying to maintain or get towards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what about, do you see any, any trends that employers need to keep in mind um, to support employees with caregiving responsibilities? Um, I think, you know, I kind of talked about um, just really overlooking, you know, as employers, you know, having them kind of look at their well-being strategies for um, their caregivers or employees. Um, as I was talking about, I think a little bit earlier, just that employers kind of over-rotated on the enormous investments that they made for parental leave and backup care and programs like that. And while it was very helpful during the pandemic, you know, a lot of caregivers were left out, you know, without any support. So, trying to um, help organizations just learn the offerings that are out there to support all of their employees, not just a few select um, employees. Um, I think as, as budget shift, I think we'll kind of see a trend more towards inclusive caregiving benefits. I know it's been such a buzzword and it's not gonna go away. It is just gonna continue to, you know, we have the ball rolling, we see what a need it is and caregivers have learned that it's okay to say, I'm a caregiver, I'm experiencing this and I need help with this or I need support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we're, we're coming up on our time here. So if you have any final questions you wanna pop in the chat, please feel free to do so. Um, but then kind of la last question here. Um, so if, if people have been hearing this conversation and they're like, yes, I definitely, I love this idea. It sounds too good to be true. Where can they go to learn more about Care Loop? Yes, so you can go to, let me grab it just real quick. I should have had it pulled up. JP, can you drop, drop that in the chat? Is she still on the call? Yes. She's there. All right, she'll be able to put throw it in the chat. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Did you hear the question? Just where can um, employers or anyone who's more interested in learning about our services, they can go to our webpage. Um, there's a place I know on there that says, for employers there she got it thank you okay yeah carol it's just for the future recording careloop.com slash yeah, employers yes correct and then that it, they can go on there to learn more about our services and what we offer and um, request demos you know connect with someone who has who will be able to talk through all the ins and outs of the services we pro provide and how we truly can support their organizations Mm -hmm. And what about, um, what would you recommend someone do if maybe they're not a decision maker at their company, but they're, um, you know, invested in, they either are a caregiver or they're invested in supporting caregivers, what can, what can their first step to be, be at their organization? I would say, you know, just even started talking, you know, with their managers, if they have you know, the, the employee resource groups can be huge if they have those kind of talking about the benefits out there that are available. You know, they can kind of get some momentum going to be able to talk to their HR people about this benefit if they feel comfortable enough. I mean, you know, did you know this benefit was out there? We've had employers go to their HR um, representatives and talk to them about, you know, I learned about this benefit. I, I learned how much it has helped this person and just having those open, honest conversations and making it known that it is such a valued um, and needed resource for so many. Yeah, and that's kind of, that's been the goal with the documentary the whole time is the, the first thing is if people don't know, if employers don't realize that this is a pain point or that 
you know, there's employees are struggling to do their job because of these caregiving extra responsibilities, then how can they even know that this would be a, a benefit that's needed? Um, so starting there, and I know it, it takes um, takes bravery for sure to put that out there for, for yes. people and not always knowing what kind of reaction you get, but um, yeah, it's going to take, take that awareness as the first step to any of these changes. It definitely will take awareness and bravery and, you know, hopefully there's enough culture within the organization that they feel safe to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. We know that's in the dream world. That's what we all want, right? right? Yeah, what we're hoping is that through these conversations, the environment at most companies changes and it doesn't take bravery to say yes. that it's just part of life. But that's, that's what we're aiming for. To really, yeah. you know, we want to see organizations be able to cu cultivate a culture of care. And that's so important to us to really know that as employers, they care about their employees and mm -hmm. as caregivers, as people, as human beings. And that's so important. Yeah, I feel like I've been thinking all along throughout this process, just as we've spent more time in this world of caregiving, that one of the fundamental challenges is that we as a culture do not value care. Um, and I, I mean, you can tell that by pay rates and by, you know, how we're mostly incentivized to prioritize work over family and, and things like that. And so it's making a, a major culture shift like that, that involves elevating the practice of care and the value of care, like that's going to take individuals, but it can be sped up by organizations, employers, companies doing that internally in, in mass as well. So I'm, I'm really excited that um, organizations like yours exist and that it's going to be part of that larger conversation of, of showing people that care is valuable and it is important. It's very important. Yes, okay. sure. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Not that I can think of. We just, you know, as a care coach, um, you know, being part of such a wonderful company ourselves, being able to walk along caregivers is the biggest gift that we can have every single day to really take that burden off of them. And, you know, they truly can know that we care about them. And so just being able to be that person for them is huge. And we really want organizations to be able to be that person for all their employees too. Yeah, we hear so much that just being seen, being recognized for your contribution that can, can go such a long way. So, all right, real quick, if you, are looking for any more information about CareLoop, it's CareLoop, C-A-R-I-L-O-O-P.com slash employers. Um, and if you're looking for information about the documentary, Unseen, you can find at caregiverdoc.com. All right. Thank you all so much for joining. And thank you, Melinda, for being here with us. Thank you all so much. Thanks, I hope you have Melinda. a great day. Thank you. So nice to meet you.